Hi everyone, Mary Lou here. Welcome to my channel. I appreciate you joining me today. I know there are so many other things you could be doing and other things you could be watching. So thank you for being here. And to subscribers, I appreciate so much that you are subscribing, both long time and new subscribers. Welcome. So last time when I gave you a uh, craft room tour, I showed you uh, 22 different tips and ideas for how to store your paper products for paper crafting because I love paper crafting. There are a lot of things I really enjoy doing. Well, one of the other things I also enjoy is sewing. And so today we're getting a tour of how I store and organize my sewing supplies and fabric. Now, I don't do massive amounts of, of sewing. I enjoy sewing. Uh, there are two things I really like sewing. One of them is I like sewing American Girl doll clothes. And because I have a daughter that all her life will be enjoying playing with dolls. It kind of gives me a good excuse to be able to uh, sew those doll clothes and design them and create scenes and I really enjoy doing that. The other thing that I uh, really care about is a charitable project that I sew for that actually helps individual women in developing nations. And so uh, I'm going to give you the craft room tour for the sewing stuff. And then at the very end, I'll talk to you some more about this charitable foundation that I care a lot about. So let's start the tour. So we're going to start our sewing craft room tour right here in this corner. Uh, if you saw my paper storage tour, this is the opposite side of my craft desk. Uh, from what the paper uh, things are stored in. And so uh, let's start right at the top. I have up there because you see that I'm not very tall. I do have a box up there that I can easily pull down. Now I don't have a bunch of stuff stacked up there. I have just a box, just a, uh, it's just setting up there in its space and I don't have to climb up on a chair, I can reach it. And you notice that it's labeled projects because I can't see in it and I can forget what, what is in these boxes. So these are ongoing projects that I'm currently working on. And I'm actually going to be doing a video to show you the finishing of this project that's actually several parts. And so look at the fabric for that. It's pretty fun. And so that's coming up. But I can just easily grab that box and take it where I want to go. This was a fun shaped box that I just went, ooh, that's kind of cool. And it fit up there in my cupboard. And so I covered it with uh, just contact paper from the dollar store because cardboard paper cuts are the worst. And so I covered it to prevent that and labeled that. So that's ongoing projects. And then down onto this shelf, this is where I store the bulk of my fabric. Now, I don't buy big, huge pieces of fabric. I'm usually buying a yard or less and generally fat quarters. And because I'm doing a lot of sewing of doll clothes, I don't need big, huge pieces. And uh, I'll show you where I store my bigger pieces, but, but I love this because it's pretty. And I will put a link to my video about how I store this, uh, the uh, bringing the fabric home, pre-shrinking, sizing, all of that. Now you don't have to pre-shrink all of your fabric, but where I sew doll clothes and a little tiny bit of shrinking affects how it fits, I do pre-shrink for that reason. And there's another reason I pre-shrink. When I have found a pretty piece of fabric and I bring it home, I don't wanna just put it away until I can use it. I want to uh, get to know the fabric. And so I just pre-shrink it all and then I can iron it and resize it and put it on the card or somewhere and I get to interact with the fabric right away. And I think that's fun because it reminds me of what I have. And then I don't end up buying lots and lots and lots of fabric that I will never use because I've interacted with it and I'm familiar with what fabrics I have. So this is my space and I am limiting myself to this space because uh, if this starts to get low, I get to buy other fabric. <laughs> 
And so I go, actually, I weed through. I do not keep massive amounts of fabric. I'm not a quilter, and I know quilters uh, probably need more fabric than I do, but that's my limit. So set yourself a limit. Um, I, I know someone that uh, she collected so much fabric, and uh, when she passed away, she had a bedroom literally stuffed with fabric that she probably had bought and not looked at in years. So a good deal, let's say you find a good deal on fabric, it's not a good deal if you're not going to use it. You could find fabric so cheap. But if it's not pretty, if it's not the type of fabric you use, if you don't have an idea of how you're going to use it, that is not a good deal. And so <laughs> limit your stash so that you can enjoy it and it doesn't become a burden, okay? And then my next shelf down, these are all my cottons. That's the one I like to use mostly. Uh, these are my flannels because I do like to make uh, little doll pajamas and things. And uh, then I've got some fabrics here that I have pre-shrunk and that I've used for other things. And I'm debating about whether to put them back on the card to add to my stash or whether I'm going to let those go and... Uh, let them go to uh, like Goodwill because people go to Goodwill looking for fabric. And when I give to Goodwill, when I give fabric to Goodwill, I always put it in a Ziploc bag so it's nice. Um, I generally try to put a tag on it that says what the amount of the fabric is. I might put fat quarters or half yard or something in a bag so that someone can actually go in, buy it, and love that fabric. It's nice to pass on the love, okay? And then I also have up here, I one of our craft jar, a quilt store in our area went out of out of business and they had rickrack, this tiny rickrack that I have not been able to find for years and it's the perfect scale for American Girl clothes. And so I went ahead and bought a little bit of that. And uh, when you see this, you'll see that I put my fabric on these comic book cards and I'll link that in the description below. And I saw this idea with, um, on Bethadilly. That's another one of my uh, YouTube people I like to watch. And she showed how to do this. And then I use the bottom part of that card to store my rickrack and uh, ribbon that I might be sewing with, okay? And I just, I just like how it looks in my cupboard. I love color, I love rainbow, and so that's nice. And then this is just a jar of buttons. When Anne was little, playing with buttons was one of her favorite things to do. So I bought all these big, huge, colorful buttons, and she loved to play with those. And I I just, I can't let go of the, the jar with the buttons. It's sentimental, so I'm keeping it. Okay, let's look down on this next shelf. This is truly a working shelf for me. And so I have the clips that I use and the the comic book cards that I use to get my fabric on the on the cards. I have my magic sizing. Love that after I've pre-shrunk because you know the feel of new fabric. Well, uh, I like to, after you pre-shrink, it, it washes out the sizing of new fabric. And so I like to resize it so that uh, it has that brand new feeling. And then I have in here my uh, embroidery box. When I started doing embroidery, I looked and looked and looked for a tin that I would like. Um, and I just kept my embroidery in a kind of a boring box until I found a tin that I loved. And so there's an idea. Just, you know, why not get something you love? Why not get something that's going to inspire you and help you be happy about what you're doing? And then I have up here also the refills and my very favorite lint roller. And it's my favorite lint roller mostly because of the color and that it's refillable. I do like this. Now over here is one of my favorite ideas. So what I have here are some envelopes that I get from the Dollar Tree and they're a dollar a piece and I love them. They have this sort of zippy thing on the top. Now they're not 
the best quality, but I don't need the best quality. So I just keep a couple of extras there, as well as some smaller ones that I've gotten from other locations, from other places. But in these bags, one of them holds my fusibles. So I have fusible web that I use for several different projects. Uh, if, I'm, if I am cutting out fabric with my Cricut machine, I always put the fusible web on it before I cut. And that's really important to help get your Cricut machine to cut fabric well. You need the fabric cutting blade, but you also, it's, it's best if you use fusible web behind your fabric before you cut it. Okay, and then in this, I have in these packets, this is a project that's coming up that I want to work on for Thanksgiving. Don't know if I'll get to it this year, but you know what? If I don't, it's ready next year with everything I need. So these are projects that I'm working on. So this is a, a doll dress that I have cut out and there's one another one. So sometimes if we're watching a show or something, sometimes I'll just get out the next uh, doll pattern I want to make. And while we're watching, I'll just cut it out. And then I can put the pieces, the pattern, everything all together in that bag so that I know, okay, in this bag, I'm making this cute sweater. I'm making a red sweater. And so I can just put it all in the bag and have it ready. And because I, I don't mind working on a few projects at once. And then when I'm working on an entire outfit, so I have uh, this uh, top and the bottom made, and then I have another uh, a shirt and some other parts to that outfit that I want to finish. So I'll put the finished pieces in until I can get back to it and get the whole outfit done. So that way I can have a few things going at once. Now, I know unfinished projects can be an issue. So here's the thing, limit your space. So those are my unfinished projects and I've got these two uh, packets ready. I can't fill that too full because I've got to get things done. And so that's my space limit. And if there's one thing, uh, one great idea, I think, for craft room organization and storage, it is limit your space for each uh, item. So that's my space limit on my unfinished projects. Now, let's say I moved along and I got a project and I, I lost interest. Like, say I didn't get it done this year. And by next year, I went, I looked at it and I went... I really don't want to do that. I'm not even interested in that. It's not something that I'm drawn to anymore. Then that whole thing can go to goodwill. You can pass that on, let somebody else enjoy it, and all the pieces are there, and they can, and someone else then has all the parts so that they can finish that project. And then that project brings new love into the world, right? So let's move down. Okay, so in this big one, this is where I keep my sewing machine. I don't keep my sewing machine out because there are uh, so many of us here uh, and the table and the space other people use. So I will leave it out uh, during a time and then I actually put it away. So I keep my irons in here and my scissors that actually so many years ago, just before my first daughter was born, I went to the fabric store and I was making clothes for her, baby clothes, also a fun thing. And I saved and saved and saved to buy the this scissor set. Uh, we were poor uh, college students. This set was $35 and at the time that seemed like so much money to me. And so we saved and saved and I bought those scissors. And so they're special to me and I keep uh, my uh, scissors here where all of the kids know you don't touch mom's sewing scissors. It's serious. We're getting real now. Okay, so I like to sew here and uh, this is my homemade tabletop iron and I will put a link for how I made that 
uh, up in the corner so you can see how to make that. I love it. Um, I use this all the time. So that's that. But I bring my sewing machine here because I have a drawer right down here with all the sewing things that I need close at hand. So I have in this drawer everything that when I'm in the middle of sewing that I might need. So because I'm, I'm ironing, uh, things as I go, I have the protectors for my fingers. I got those at the, at the dollar store. They're real handy. I've got my spare bobbins. And here's one of the things I've, I've really liked are these bobbin clips. So if you do much sewing, you know that your bobbins can, the strings on your bobbin can get pretty wild. So I just uh, use those clips to corral my bobbin thread, and I really, really like those. I have needles, pins, thimbles, uh, my measuring tool. This is one of my favorite sewing tools. This is a, a, clo a tool that Clover makes. I'll put a link for that below. I've got my seam ripper. I've just got all kinds of things there. Now, right next to that, I have another drawer where I keep all of my threads uh, my sewing machine parts and repair and cleaning tools, elastic, safety pins, uh, different threads. And as you see, I've got this much space and that's it. Now, sometimes I'll need a new color of thread and, and I'll fit that in, but you can see white is what I normally use. So just it just keeps everything so tidy to have it all right there and easy to be seen. And the dividers that I'm using for both of these drawers, those dividers I originally bought at Costco and I see them come back every now and then but you can use things from the dollar store but in a shallow drawer like this make sure you measure your depth so you know how deep uh, you can go with those uh, dividers. Okay, and then my next drawer down, this is where I keep my larger pieces of fabric. So these are fabrics that I have plans for. Uh, you can tell what colors I like. I have a tablecloth I want to make there. In this area, these are tea towels. And I like to do a new tea towel for each season. And if you see my Christmas one from last year and maybe my Valentine's Day. I don't know. You'll see me making some tea towels and using the Cricut to cut the designs on those tea towels. But here's the space I have for tea towels and uh, that's it. And then behind there, I have some more of my uh, stabilizer, uh, the larger pieces of fusible things that won't fit in my packet up above. And then down here, these are the stretch cottons like for t-shirt ribbing and uh, for t-shirts for, of course, American Girl doll. And then just a few other uh, fabrics here. I did a video on how to make Pioneer rag dolls with no sewing, and that's uh, some fabric that's left over from that. So, uh, that may be at some point something that's, that's going to go to Goodwill, or I might find something for it. Uh, this fabric <laughs> is sentimental to me. I actually, it's an American Girl fabric that was made by Daisy Kingdom, and uh, the, the original Kirsten doll had a dress made of that, so I found the fabric and made my daughter a matching dress to her doll. Then let me show you this bottom drawer, one of my favorites. It's empty. I think it's a great idea to have some empty space for uh, something that might come in or just so that you know you're not overloaded. There's something about having an empty drawer that makes me feel good for some reason. And then uh, the last thing I want to show you here on the tour is this box. Now, when we lived uh, in Washington, uh, our neighborhood was the best neighborhood ever, and we had a couple living uh, across the street from us, Nate and Carl, and they were wonderful, and 
This was one of Nate's treasures. But it always makes me think of them and what great guys they were. And so I use this actually for buttons. And uh, I have more buttons than I will ever use. And so at some point, I think I'll probably go through this. But uh, right now, it's just fine. And I've split the, the buttons up uh, by types and by colors. And I use these in in uh, both sewing and paper crafting. And then uh, this top drawer is pins and needles and things. And check this out. These are some really old uh, needle packets, like from, I don't know, way back in the day. I had an aunt who passed away and she had several of these. And then my mom let me have several. They're just, they're just so cool. They're so old. You know, they're just really old school, but I love them. I love this one particularly. I just think that's so clever and so fun. And so, and then I also have some, just some decorations, some old spools. And I remember the day when uh, wooden spools were in and when my mom was putting snaps on our pajamas, she would use the spool around the snap and then hammer it at the kitchen table with her hammer. So... So some of these kind of older things that cause you to think about people you care about or old days, they're kind of fun. And those are fun things to add to your crafting or sewing space. And so just to finish up today, I want to talk to you about the sewing project uh, that really means the most to me. And let me grab my bin and excuse the kind of clutter back there. I'm lining things up for a future video um, to show you some holiday things. The charity that I sew for and that I really care about is called Days for Girls. And I found out about this when we lived in Washington. And the founder of Days for Girls, Celeste, uh, I, th I think you pronounce it Mergens, uh, she actually lives in Washington. And uh, my two daughters, Lindsay and Kate, and I got to go to uh, the Seattle area and meet her and talk with her and learn about her her project and uh, how we can help and what we want to do moving forward. And so the project of Days for Girls is to help women uh, during their periods actually have the products and the resources that they need, plus the education to understand what's going on with their bodies. And so what was happening, and is so sad, and this still happens in a lot of countries in the world, is because the men um, control the supply chain. Uh, the men were exploiting the girls in exchange for pads. The issue is, is that in a lot of these developing countries, uh, the girls aren't allowed to go to school during their menses because uh, there is the fear of blood. And so the girls have to stay home and miss all of that school every single month. And so a lot of the girls stop going to school or they get so far behind that it causes them problems. And then so they want to go to school, they want to learn, and so they go to the men who are controlling the supply and the men are requiring favors from these girls in exchange for giving them the, uh, the pads or whatever they need for their period. And it just makes me so mad. So Celeste saw this and wanted to make a difference. And I want to make a difference too. And as a, and as a school teacher, uh, just the whole, the whole situation, the whole um, trauma to the girls, the uh, limitation to the girls, it just <clears throat> bothers me a lot. And and I know how important it is, particularly in a developing nation, to educate the women. Uh, because they are the ones educating future generations. And so I wanted to figure out what I could do. What I really want to do is go over to Africa. I'd love to go to Liberia, where my children are from. But I'd love to go over to Africa and be the teacher and uh, teach the girls. And there's a whole, Celeste has created a whole curriculum about their body and and what what is happening every month, and it's it's a beautiful program. But one of the things I knew I could do would was to sew, and so 
what she, what Celeste has done is has created. She has created a um, a little pack like this that can be given to each of the women as they uh, take the class and learn about their bodies. Because there are women in some of these countries, they don't even know what is happening. They don't know uh, why they're having children. They don't know why this blood is coming every month. Uh, they don't know why it stops. And so education is a huge part of this program with Days for Girls. But each of the women are given this pack and in it, this is this outside is the part I'm sewing because it's pretty involved. And then inside it comes with washable liners that can uh, be used. Now, another one of the problems that were that, uh, people were encountering. So the idea was, well, then let's just get pads, more pads over there and uh, into the hands of different people. But there's also a disposal problem. And so what they really need is something uh, that they can wash. And that is uh, for their culture that actually is not um, weird at all. And so the way this works is this, the pad slides into those little pockets on the end and then this snaps uh, beneath in underwear. And so it's completely washable, completely reusable. And uh, the she, Celeste and the women that developed this pattern were just very thoughtful and very, very careful about making it work. And so uh, they can double up the liners. There's just a lot of ways to use it. And then the whole thing can be washed. This has become a, a resource for women to be able to control their own uh, destiny, their own health. And it has uh, become a, a way to educate uh, women that need it. And so it all comes in that nice tidy little pack. So I sew that outside liner or the outside holder and then somebody else sews the liners and then uh, at a Days for Girls facility, it all gets assembled and then uh, sent either to Celeste or uh, now there are women um, in local areas that are planning trips to Africa or other countries to do the education and to hand these out. Now, another part of this that I love is uh, as people go to Africa, the goal is for them to come with about 200 of these kits of these, you know, 200 of, of those, uh, plus a flip chart that you use to teach, but they're requesting that women come to uh, set this up with $5,000 so that they can actually bring the patterns and set up local women in in Africa or or Haiti or wherever in the local community to start sewing these as a business. And then it's women supporting women. The Days for Girls group is very particular about it doesn't go through the men because in a lot of those countries, that's the problem. But these are women helping women. And there are a lot of men involved in Days for Girls as well. It's just that when they get into a third world area, the goal is to go through the women in producing these kits. That's what I sew. And that's a cause that I really care about. And so uh, you can look at uh, the Days for Girls website. You can find uh, your local community. You can find ways to help. You can donate money. Uh, you can, their website will give you all the information you need. They even have patterns and instructional videos about how to do this. I hope you'll take a look at that and, or look at other ways that you can help with the skills that you have. I am not a skilled clothing sewer, for example, but I can do this. And it's a cause that I care about. And so I hope you'll look into that and uh, see how you can help. I hope you've enjoyed today's craft room tour. And I hope it maybe has given you a chance to think about ways that you can help in the world. If you haven't, please subscribe. Please join our interesting, fun, goofy community right here. And we'll see you next time.